Hello, this is Sharon Sirago, and today we're going to start studying about angles in the plane. We'll learn about a whole bunch of different kinds of angles, and this will be our stepping stone to a higher level geometry. <clears throat> so first of all, you know that you're going to have questions on the PSAT and the SAT that will be about angles, and two kinds that you absolutely have to know very well are the vertical angles and the supplementary angles. So we're going to start with the vertical angles. <clears throat> vertical angles are two opposite angles formed by two intersecting lines. So you can see you have line AB and line CD intersecting at this point, and these two angles that are created would be equal. <clears throat> Actually, there's four angles because these two angles would also be equal to each other. They're called vertical angles. <clears throat> and our vertical angles are always going to have the same measure. So since we know that this angle is 100 degrees, then the vertical angle is also equal to 100 degrees. And so then we see that y is equal to 100. Then we go on to the supplementary angle. Now, a supplementary angle is formed when you have a common side and like this, and those two supplementary angles add up to 180. So basically, you've got a straight line here, and you know that a straight line is 180 degrees. And then you have this line right here that divides that. So if this angle were 80, then the remaining part would be 100. Of course, it doesn't look like it's drawn to scale, but you're often going to see things not drawn to scale on the SAT. <clears throat> now, you'll notice that there are four possible supplementary angles because you could do, well, we can do the two that we talked about. We could take this line and do those two angles. We could take this line and do the bottom two angles. We could take this line and do these two angles. So just as long as you've got a straight line, just remember you've got angles on the top of it and on the bottom of it. So let's see if we can uh, ask some questions and see if you can answer them. You've got four different angles here. And what we want to know first is the value of Z. Notice that you have a straight line here, which is 180 degrees. If you know 60 of it, then you would just take the 180, subtract 60, and you would know angle Z. For angle X, remember your vertical angles are exactly opposite each other. They form this X right here, and they're equal. <clears throat> And then if we wanted to add angle X plus Z, look what we have, a straight line. So clearly, if you add these two angles together, you would have the measure of a straight line. And then getting a little bit more difficult, we want X plus Z, which would be our two angles here, minus Y. And Y is equal, easy to calculate. If you know this is 60 and you've got a straight line, which is 180, subtract this and you have it. So calculate all of those answers, then check yourself. We also have right angles. <clears throat> this is what it looks like. You have two lines that are perpendicular, and they will form a right angle. Now, our right angles are always 90 degrees, and we call these perpendicular lines forming the right angle that is indicated by that little square right there. <clears throat> You'll also notice that there would be four of them, because since these are perpendicular, if this angle equals 90, then so would this angle equal 90. If that equals 90, so would this one, because we're looking at a straight line, 90 and 90 is 180. Let's look at this diagram. Now, in geometry, we want to always fill in everything we know before we get too carried away with anything. And in this, we've got two lines are perpendicular. We use this symbol right here to tell us that EF is perpendicular to AB. This is what it looks like. EF is perpendicular to AB. 
and then we have our complementary angles. So if we have two angles that have a sum of 90 degrees, those are called complementary angles. Here we have two complementary angles. Look at this. You see we've got a right angle here, so this line is perpendicular to this line. This is 90 degrees. You actually have a line going through that, so the sum of x plus y would then equal to 90 degrees. <clears throat> and anytime we have angles that equal 90 degrees, we call them complementary angles. So let's look at another example here. Getting a little bit more involved, but just take a look at it before you worry about the question and see everything that you can learn from it. So if we know that this angle is 40 degrees, then we should be able to know what the vertical angle is. If we know that this is a right angle, and we know this is our vertical angle to that, which would be 40 degrees, then all we have to do is take 180, subtract this 40, and we get that angle. We already know that this is 90 degrees, and look at this. We're looking at another straight line and how much we already know of it. We know 90 degrees here. We know 40 degrees there, so we could calculate that very easily. So we know what we can find out in here. Let's see what the question is. We've got things intersecting. We know that EF is perpendicular to AB, <clears throat> and they want to know what Y plus X is. So as you're looking through this, don't forget that there is a question over there. Don't just get to X and say, oh, I, I figured out how much X is. Well, that's great. But always go back to the question because that's what they're asking you. What is X plus Y? So now we would know this one plus that one. Here are your choices. <clears throat> so we know that if this was 40, our angle Y would be 140 since it's a supplementary angle. And if this was 140, we know that this is 40 both from supplementary angles and also because of a vertical angle. We know that this is 90 degrees, so this whole thing here has to be 90 degrees. If this was 40, that would have to be 50. And then we get back to the question, what was y plus x? Always go back and verify the question. Now we have another thing. Parallel lines create a whole bunch of different angles for us. So uh, anytime we have a line that intersects a pair of parallel lines, look at all the angles we've got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different angles that can be created from that. This line right here that cuts through those two parallel lines is called a transversal. And when we talk to you about this line, we're always going to call it a transversal. So if you don't know that term, you need to learn it now. Each one of these angles in parallel lines is going to be related to other angles in that in different ways. So right here we have an X and a Y. We know those are vertical angles. The Z and the Y we know are supplementary angles. There's our straight line. The X and the Z are supplementary angles. There's our straight line. We could even add different things together and find out different things. But now let's look at our parallel lines and see some other angles here. We know that these two are vertical angles and that they're equal. But when we look at angle X and angle R, there's got to be a relationship between those also. So these are called corresponding angles because they correspond to each other in placement. So let's just take a look at this. This angle is on top of the parallel line to the left of the transversal. And it corresponds to another angle on this other parallel line that has the same placement. So this angle is on top of the parallel line to the left of the transversal. Look at it again. On top to the left. On top to the left. And that means that they're equal to each other. And then we have another set here. We have this one is on the bottom to the right of the transversal. 
on the bottom of the parallel line to the right of the transversal, and those would be equal also. And so we've this uh, information right here, you can read it. We've just said all of that. Just remember that these are corresponding angles. So if we ascribed a value to x, then certainly we would know that w was also 100 degrees because they're vertical angles. But if x was 100 degrees, we also now know that r would also be 100 degrees because they are corresponding angles. And if we knew that w was 100 degrees because it was a vertical angle to x, then u would also be a 100 degrees because it is a corresponding angle to w. So these are wonderful things to learn, and you must know these so that you can meander about from one place to the other to figure out what these angles are. Then we have another kind of angle. This is called same side interior and same side exterior. So here we have our parallel lines again. We have our transversal. And then we have another word. It says interior. So I want to uh, just look at that. We're going to look at interior. That's what we're going to focus on right now. These are inside the parallel lines. We're calling them interior. It's like the interior of a house. It's inside the house. Okay, here's your roof. Here's your floor. These angles would be your interior angles. And it says same side. We're talking about the same side of this transversal. So they're inside the parallel lines, and they're to the left of the transversal. And what do we know about those? they are going to equal 180 degrees. Same side interior angles equal 180 degrees and same side exterior. So here we are with the exterior angles. They're on the outside now. X on the outside to the right of the transversal. Y on the outside to the right of the transversal. Again, they would equal 180 degrees. All of this has to be memorized. You have to know the names. You have to know whether they're equal or whether they equal 180 degrees. So let's look at this one. Think first of all of what you can tell before we start messing around with what the subject uh, the question is. If this angle is 70 degrees, this is a vertical angle, right? We're studying corresponding angles. Here's an angle here. It corresponds to this one right here, right? That's not what we want. We want this one. All right, so let's look at one of the other things we learned. Remember we talked about same side interior. Nothing there. What about same side exterior? Here we go. This 70 right here is exterior. Same side of the transversal, exterior. Now we have two angles that are related. It's your job to remember that same side exterior angles equal 180 degrees. So then we would come up with the question now, perhaps what is the value of x minus w? All right, do you know what w is? It's a vertical angle here. Do you know what x is? It's a same, a, um, same side exterior angle. All right. So I think that you can put all of that together and get values for every one of those variables. Then our last one with parallel lines is called alternate interior angles. Here we have our parallel lines again, and then we have interior angles because they're both on the inside, but then it says interior, right? And the next one is alternate. Well, here's our transversal. So alternate would mean different sides, one on the left side, one on the right side. But it also means alternating position top and bottom. So we have here, it's on the left to the top, and this one is on the right to the bottom of this transversal, alternate interior angles. Now, 
some people like to um, <clears throat> see that this forms a Z. But it only forms a Z if you're looking at it in this direction. You see the Z there? So sometimes a lot of kids will like to look for that. But just think, if you're looking at it from this direction, that's not a Z. Okay, so you have to be careful with that if, if you learned to look for a Z because it still is alternate interior angles. And they are always equal. That's what we need to know about them. So we've got all of that information here, alternate interior angles. And they are on the inside. They are on opposite sides of the transversal, and they are equal. All right, let's see if we can do some practice problems. Okay, so we've got this. We know that uh, 40 degrees here is the same as this W, right? And then we have a straight line here. If we know that this is 40, we could figure out what this one is. If this is 40, here's our straight line, we could figure out what this is. Just take 180, because a straight line always equals 180. Subtract your 40, you get your Y there. And they're asking us which of the following must be true. So what you should do is go ahead and figure out all of the degrees for each one of these angles, and then go through there and see which one has to be true. Here's another one. In geometry, what we want you to do is always fill in everything you know before you start worrying about what the problem is. Well, this is a vertical degree right here, so we could fill that in. This is Y, so our Y would be there also. It's interesting, though, that they'd ask us to change variables, so let's look at it for a second. Oh, here we go. It says Y is equal to 2X. So if Y is 2X, we'd want to write that down. And we would want the, ver the uh, vertical angle also, so this would be 2x. Hopefully I can write it down, sort of. Here's our vertical angle for that. And here's a right angle here. We're writing down everything we know. That's all we're doing. But look what we've got. Now all of a sudden we have a triangle. Now how many degrees are in a triangle? 180. So why don't we write an algebraic equation then? Because we've got how many x's here? Two here, one there, and we already know 90 degrees of it, so the only thing we're trying to find is the 90 degrees. So couldn't we just say 3x is equal to 90? Isn't that what we're looking at? We're looking for 90 degrees. We've got 1, 2, 3. Easily done. <clears throat> All right, now we've got a whole bunch of other things here. Lots of possibilities. Every angle that we know is there. And they want to know which other angle is equal to angle 2. Well, let's take a look. First of all, you know that your vertical angle is equal to 2. But it's not part of the answers. If that one's 2, then your alternate interior angle would be the same as 2. That's not part of the answers either. But if this is 2 because of either a corresponding angle or alternate interior angle, then here that vertical angle would have to equal to 2, and there's our answer. So you just have to meander around. Here. It's kind of nice to look at what you have immediately. The first thing that I'm seeing is that shape that I told you about, that Z. So if this angle right here is 75, then this whole, both of these angles together would have to be 75. And we already know 20 of it, so you can tell how much this angle is. Then you've got a straight line here. If you know what this angle is, you can figure out that next angle. And what was the question? Oh, they want to know the value of A. Well, there it is. You see? 
Here's another one. What was our best friend? Remember I told you that the straight line is your best friend because you always know how much it is. It's 180 degrees. So this is just algebra, isn't it? If all of these angles together, all of that stuff is 180 degrees, then how hard would it be to find x? You just set up your equation. Let's see what we've got over here. Ooh, getting a little bit more. So the important thing, again, is always mark everything that you know first before you start worrying about what the question is. So we know that BD is perpendicular to CE. <coughs> Excuse me. That was marked. There's your right angle. AE is perpendicular to CE. That one was marked. There's your right angle. Here. AE is equal to EB. We have to mark that from the very beginning. If you do not mark it, you are likely to forget it. So now we've taken care of everything they've told us, and we can go on. Here's our straight line. This is our best friend because we know it's 180 degrees. They told us about 110 of it. So the rest of it would be how much? 70 degrees. And here are these marks. And that's the important thing. We know from our study of triangles that if you've got two sides that are equal, the angles opposite those sides are equal. And so if this one is 70, then this one has to be 70 also. Well, the x is sitting next to it, but we can't figure out anything there. We're going to have to continue meandering around. And you see what else we have here? Another triangle. Why do we love triangles? Because they're 180 degrees. So if we already know that we've got 140, how much is missing? 40? Okay. And look what else we have. A right angle, 90 degrees. That means this has to be a right angle also. So then if this was 40, you can figure out this one. You've got another triangle here, and you can figure out x. So what I want you to see is that all you have to do is just meander around. You start here and just go around and around and around until you finally get to what you're looking for. Another straight line. This is going to be a simple one for us. We can find x because we know that the two of them together are equal to a straight line, 180 degrees. Same thing over here. Then it's time to go back and look at the question because we figured out what y was. We figured out what x was. They want to know what the sum is. And then here comes another one. This is kind of interesting. I wonder what it wants to know. Oh, it's looking for the sum of all of these things. But it says H is 80 degrees. Let's do that one first. This is 80. There's got to be an easier way to write 80. Okay, and they want to know angle A, C, F, and G, right? Well, here's your straight line. So if this is 80, how much is this one? 100? If this is 80... You see your vertical angle here? Ah, look at this. You've got same side interior angles. You have vertical angle. So you can just add each one of those up, figure out what they are, add them up. It's very, very easy. You know, when I see something like this, I haven't looked at the question yet, and I don't know whether this is going to be helpful or not, but I always see a circle. And I always like that because I know how many degrees all of these things added up together is. It's 360 degrees. So if I can mark that, I like to do that first of all before I even look at anything. Let's see what the question is. It says A plus B plus D is 180. Well, that's interesting because what I'm looking for is A plus B plus C is 180 degrees. But since it said D instead of C, 
Wouldn't that mean that angle C is the same as angle D? So what could I do? I don't know what I'm going to wind up doing yet, but what I can do is just draw these letters here so I know that this is the same as a C or a D. This is the same as a C or a D. Oh, here's vertical angles right here. You see them? So it could also be angle A. And this could have also been an angle A. And this one could have been a D, a C, or A. They're all the same. And so, and this one too, right here. The only ones that aren't the same are B and E. And it says, which one of these is not true? So let's see what the rest of the stuff is. Oh, look at this. They're just going to give you a whole bunch of things to look at. <clears throat> When you go through there and you mark these angles and you find out that they're all equal to practically the same thing, it's going to be very simple for you to see which angle is not going to fit into this pattern. <clears throat> all right, let's see what we've got here. We've got a B. We could put a vertical angle there. We have an A. We don't have a whole lot of information for this, so let's go ahead and look at the problem. Here we go. It says, N, this line right here, bisects this angle. We have to mark that because by the time we get back to that, we might have forgotten it. So the minute you see it, mark it. A little curved line for our angles and then a little line like this, a little straight line through it, just like you do with your straight lines and you want to see that two lines are the same. We do the same thing with angles. So now when we get back over here, we'll say, oh, yes, I remember that those are equal to each other. And then this is another interesting thing. It says that this angle B is between 30 and 40. It cannot be 30. It cannot be 40. But it can be anything in between. That means it could be a 31, a 32, a 39, whatever you want to pick. Because the question says, what is one possible value? And this is a very important word because it means there are several options for your choices. For me, I want to pick a number that's easy for me to calculate. And I know how to count in fives very easily. So for me, putting 35 for this angle would be the best thing for me. Now, you, if you have a calculator and you want to put some other number, that's okay. They're all going to work because the only parameters was it had to be between 30 and 40. So if I've got 35 here, then I have a vertical angle. That would be 35. Look at this. You see this, you see this Z right here? Alternate interior. So if this is 35, that would be 35 also. Here I've got a vertical angle. That would be 35. And now, aren't we glad that we marked these angles and said that they were equal? Because by the time we got back up there, we would be very likely to forget. So I now know that if this is 35, that one has to be 35 also. All right, so what would happen if I joined these two together? I, of course, would have 70. 35 and 35 is 70. But look at this. Corresponding angles on top of the parallel line to the right of the transversal on top of the parallel line to the right of the transversal. You see how it works? All right, and so then they would, you would tell what your answer was there. Now this question, <clears throat> let's see what we've got. There are no numbers here, so maybe they're going to give us some. They did. And so we know that angle W is 50. All right, but that's all that they've told us here. And they're asking for this angle plus this angle. All right, but you've got a triangle. So these are not parallel lines. You're not going to be able to work your magic like we can up here. It's just a plain old triangle. All right, so where do we go? <clears throat> you know that a triangle has 180 degrees in it. We already know 50 degrees of it. So let's just bite the bullet and fill in something for these two angles. How much do we have left? This is 50. The whole thing has to add up to 180, so we've got 130 degrees left. You can divide that any way you want. 
but you've got to have 180 degrees in this whole circle. And once you've made your choice for this angle and this angle, then go ahead and calculate your exterior angle. It's just a straight line. You see it? You see your straight line there? This angle and that angle. And here's your straight line right here. This angle and that angle. And then after you filled in these angles, then add them together because that's what the question was. Now, people, there's going to be a lot of times where you have to make a decision about what numbers you want to use. Lots of times we're going to have to plug in numbers. There's not anything wrong with it. Just get used to it because it is going to be necessary on a lot of these problems. Then whatever you chose, pick the answer. You might go back and try putting different answers in here to prove to yourself that it'll work every time. I don't care what numbers you put. As long as your triangle adds up to 180 degrees and this started off with 50, your answer is going to be the same. Okay, we've got a little drawing going on here. What's your best friend? Your best friend is right here. And how many things do we have here? One, two, three, four, five. So if I wanted to find out what X was, that would be pretty easy to do. I don't know what the question is. Let's go look. Oh, it does say what is the value of X. This is algebra. <laughs> This whole thing, all those together, is equal to 180 degrees. That's very simple. All right, here comes another one, if it ever quits wiggling. And we're going to have a vertical angle right here. You can see that. You're going to have an angle here, 90 degrees, 90 degrees there. These lines are perpendicular. Okay. And they said that X, that's right here. It didn't come across correctly on the diagram. This is X, and that's equal to 40 degrees. This was 90, so how much is this one? And then whatever it is, there's your vertical angle the same. This is 90, so how much would this one be? You see how easily you can calculate it? Now later on, either Miss Vorwerk or Miss Howell is going to tell you another theorem for this. I'm going to leave that to them. But this is how you can figure it out in case you forget all of the rest of the stuff about geometry. Easy to figure out. Just don't get excited about it. All right, now we have some more angles. Oh, look, we've got a triangle. I love triangles because we know how much those are, don't we? And if we use the vertical angle there, we've got an A right in there. If we use the vertical angle, we've got a B right in there. So let's go look at the question, see what it has to say. They're looking for the value of C. They said that A is equal to 60, B is equal to 50. This is too simple. It's too simple. You can get that so easily. All right. All of these are in your homework. There's going to be more of them to do. And uh, just work through them. And then when we have our meeting, there's some of your answers there. When we have our meeting, then we will go through every one of them that you had trouble with. So I just want to be sure you understand, if you had trouble, even if you guessed the answer correctly, it's going to be critical that you tell us what you missed or what you had trouble with so we can straighten it out. This is the foundation. If you don't get this, it's going to show up again later. Okay, so I look forward to meeting with you and going over all of this stuff. And you have a happy day, and we'll see you again soon.